Hello, my name is Blake Beckstein. I'm a program manager in the Biological Technologies Office at DARPA. My interest is in agricultural biosecurity. So along that theme, we're interested in improving mass production of beneficial insects to aid in our pursuit of achieving agricultural biosecurity. Insects can cause problems in agronomic systems, but they can also provide many benefits. And so to do studies that involve insects, you oftentimes need a lot of them to be able to do the research studies you need or provide the products that you're looking for. So in this topic, we want to remove and reduce the barriers that are involved in production of insects on a mass scale. So the reasons that you might want to produce large numbers of insects would be to provide pollinators that could be released and used in agricultural settings, release insects that either eat bad insects or that are parasitoids of pest insects, and even as crazy as providing large amounts of protein through nutritious, delicious insects that are coming out on the market. So there's a lot of bottlenecks in the production system that we currently have. Some of these might be the feeding media and the development of what the insects will use as their nutritional source to be raised in a large setting. Also the labor costs associated with moving insects, removing dead insects, harvesting the products from these systems. The post-processing, so if you're working with insects, especially edible insects, how do you remove the crunchy parts from the delicious parts? Also quality control, how do you make Make sure that you avoid disease and the impacts of infestations of the wrong insects that you don't want in the system. And then also we'd like to lower the entry cost into the market of insect production for, for mass systems. So the solutions that we foresee would come from several different areas. It might be automation of the process of delivering insects, might be molecular tools that down-regulate pathogen genes or improve the insects in some way, and then also sensing and computing. So can you take that automation to the next step and develop sensors that might allow you to better control the environmental conditions within insect rearing systems? What we want to do is take a look at all of the opportunities that we have for insect technology to be utilized for our benefit. And so there's a lot of exciting things that are happening. And as we walk around in this building at DARVA, we see a lot of exciting technologies. So we have an opportunity to bridge what some of these technologies that are developing have to offer with our needs in insect sciences. So we want to use sensors, robotics, computing to develop better insect processing technologies. We also want to take advantage of the plummeting costs that are associated with genetic and molecular techniques that can improve the insect stocks that we think need to be mass produced. So we set this topic up in three phases. The first one is sort of entry into this, where we're looking at relatively small scales, and that small scale would really show proof of concept. So can you improve the processing on a scale of 10 to hundreds of insects? And so this first phase will be the gateway to phase two, obviously, and it would be a base $100,000 six-month project with an option for an additional $50,000 for another four months. If proof of concept is shown at this smaller scale of tens to hundreds of insects, then we want to move into a larger processing situation in a real-world setting where you might be working with hundreds to thousands of insects, potentially millions depending on the insect species you're interested in. And all of this is kind of relative because if you're producing large lepidopterans, they're probably going to be fewer individuals than if you're working with parasitoids that would be released in the millions. So it has to be a logical approach to this. So we encourage applications that are going to use these emerging engineering and genetic genomic tools. The outcomes that we would see would be successful new artificial diets that improve survivability, increase size, increase fitness and fecundity in the animals being produced. We also see the use for automation, ways that take 
the number of people working in these facilities out of the equation and make it easier to produce high level, high quality insects for different needs. And also post-processing, this would be, again, how do you remove the crunchy parts from the good parts? Or if you were working with parasitoids, how do you make sure that you're collecting the right stage of insect to be released? And then the last thing is materials and methods to spread the return of investment back to the industry and scale the way that we do that. So again, phase one, we want to show proof of concept. This will be developing these engineering and molecular tools. We want to make sure that you're doing what is needed within your area of insect science to accomplish the goals that you need. The key delivery, again, I want to kind of foot stomp this home, is the demonstration of proof of concept. So do these new techniques actually make the industry better? Moving into phase two, where we would be showing proof of principle in a real life setting. So now we're actually getting to the point where we can show that this can be technology that gets implanted into what is doing in a commercial operation for insect production. And then that transition, we want to look both directions. Number one is commercial, and of course this one is probably going to have a large commercial application. But then also the military side of things. And our vision is really looking at the ecosystem services. So places that we think this might land would be in the combat feeding directorate, which is where food for military is developed. They, of course, have pest issues in that scenario, but then also the opportunity to use insect protein as a potential food source. And then also the Armed Forces Pest Management Board, which deals with insect issues quite often. So that is the program that we've set up. We hope to get a lot of really great innovative proposals. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one follow up with PM, please do. We have 15 minutes that we can provide to you. We have to be fair to everybody that would be proposing. So we have some limitations on exactly what we can talk about and, and how we can talk about it. What we would be interested in is if you have an idea, bringing that idea and bouncing that off us rather than coming and saying, we want to get involved in this area, what do you want? So we're looking for good ideas that fit this topic. If you want to sign up, you can email Jamin Dreyer, who's my technical assistant on this project, and his contact information is shown here. So thank you very much, and we look forward to getting great proposals.